So we're going to talk about some of the important details of linear regression. The first one is association versus causation. So we've interpreted the slope, V1, of our simple linear regression model to be the change in the predicted value of y associated with a one unit increase in x. Or we say, if x goes up one, y goes up blank, however much your slope is. And sometimes we say, oh, this is the effect of x on y. But we can't actually prove or even really show that a change in an independent variable x causes a change in the independent y. So we cannot say that. So we can't show that a change in x causes a change in y. Instead, our linear regression can only be used to establish that the two variables kind of move together and that the independent variable contributes information for predicting the dependent variable. So really, we can't say that x causes a change in y. What we can do is we can use x to predict y. We call this association versus causation. Because we can use x to predict y, they're associated, but we can't actually say that x causes a change in y. Let's write that down here because it's so important. So we cannot say that a change in x causes a change in y. It might be the case, but we can't actually say that with statistics. Sometimes this association, the reason that they seem to be moving together, is caused by a third variable you haven't accounted for that's affecting both x and y. We call that a lurking variable. So for example, as mattress sales have increased in the past, college professor salaries have also increased. So we have something here with mattress sales and salaries. And that looks like there was a pretty strong relationship. Does this show that increasing mattress prices causes an increase in the professor's salaries? Does that make sense that if the furniture store starts increasing mattress prices that my salary will go up? Probably not. That wouldn't make any sense. Okay. So we can't say that it's causing it. You can't cause it. Instead, both variables are influenced by a third variable, the long run growth in the national economy. This is called our lurking variable. So the national economy is our lurking variable. It's important to realize that mattress prices aren't causing the changes in our professor salaries, but they might still give us good information to predict the professor salaries because they're associated. So what happens is the economy goes up and it makes the mattress sales go up. But at the same time, when the economy goes up, the salaries go up. So it seems like they're associated and working together. Okay, there's a problem for you to try. Now let's talk about outliers and influential observations. So linear regression can be very sensitive to outliers. If an observation has a strong influence on a regression line, we call it an influential point. Okay, so for example, I have a specific data set and I've added some extra points to see what would happen. So here's my original data set. Now so here's my original data set. The points all seem fairly close to the line. R squared is pretty good. Notice what happens if I add one point that's still on the line, but far away. Okay, so this one is still on line, just far away. Notice the equation of my line didn't change very much. My slope is still 26.8, 26.8. My y-intercept is still 113, 113. My r squared actually got even higher on this one, but it's still in line, doesn't really change yet. Okay. So this one is an outlier because it's far from the rest of the data, but it is not an influential point because it didn't change my line. But look what happens for this one when I put my point way over here. Okay, when I put my point way over here, you can't tell as much on the scale, but my line moved up. And kind of down. So my line changed. So look at my slope. I went from 26 to 22. My y-intercept went from 113 to 342 and r squared dropped a lot lower. Um, over So this one is an outlier 
because it's far away and it is also influential. Look at this point over here now. I moved it far away from the line. It is definitely still an outlier. And look how influential it was. It moved that line so far down that it's not even really through the data anymore. This line is not fitting our data. There's no way that's a good fit for our data. And look how slow my R squared value is. It's only down to 0.07. That's horrible. So this one point moved it so much that my line's not even close to fitting my data. So in linear regression, if you have an outlier, it can be very influential. It can move that line until it's going to be completely worthless to you. That's one reason you should always look at the plots and not just put it all in the computer and use the numbers it gives you without thinking.